Thank you to our sponsor for curating this collection. Let's score art based on 14 qualities. Use our 9-point scale to score how clear and smart each quality is used. Reply 1, 2, or 3 for low quality. Use 4, 5, or 6 for OK quality. And 7, 8, or 9 for high quality. So now, let's score this art. Welcome back to another art score. This time we're going to take a look at a Jackson Pollock. Now, some people like Jackson Pollock, some people don't. I personally think he has some really great skills, but as an artist, I don't put him in that category. So when I go through the art scoring, we're taking a look at this painting called Number One. As a subject story, I give it a, a one out of nine because there is no subject to it, there is no story to it, and I don't consider chaos to be the feeling that he was trying to convey. His use of medium, I give it a nine because I've always respected Jackson Pollock's skill in his craft, and the craft, there is a rhythm to the way he does it, there's a control to the way he does it that makes a Jackson Pollock painting look like a Jackson Pollock painting. So when it comes to the medium, I give him a nine. When it comes to color, specifically in this painting, I give him a six. I'm not gonna say yes, Yes, he has a clear control of color, although when I, I give him a six because there's some intelligence there. He's using white and black, obviously limiting his palette to those two values, and then he's bringing in this, this yellow orange and this blue green, and that's really his palette. Values, I give it a five. There really is no value control in this. What, you know, Wherever the white lands and where the black goes, there is no dominant contrast. There is no plan in terms of the values, so whatever happens, happens. So I give him a five. So so it's kind of, you know, the fact that he's using the black, the white, and then he's using two colors that are kind of a little lighter in it and maybe a 50% gray. Style, I give him a nine. Obviously, you look at this, this is a Jackson Pollock. There are a lot of copycatters who came after him, but when you look at this, it's a very unique style that he created. Structure, I'm going to give him a six. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say no, but I can't really say yes because he's not planning and designing these images. They're way too random, but there is something innate within Jackson work that holds it together and so there is an underlying structure to it even though it primarily into it I can't say yes if he's not being deliberate about his structure if it's more of an intuitive thing that's occurring then that means he's just very very sensitive to space and things like that and so that's very very cool but if he's not being intentional or deliberate and he's only being intuitive and therefore random then I will put him in that four five six range not that seven eight or nine range movement I give him a six there's a lot of movement in here but there's no order to the movement there's no purpose to the movement and so it, it ultimately creates chaos and and so even though there is a lot of movement in it it's not intelligent movement his shapes I give it a one there's no difference between the background and the foreground there's nothing like that's being considered his edges there are no edges that he's caring for um he's just putting he's dripping his paint and wherever it lands it lands and he's not going back and crafting the spaces between those let's call them lines okay i'm gonna give it a, a four on soul again he's conveying something there's a feeling or emotion there you know again random not intentional not deliberate and it, you may ask well how do you know it's not deliberate well because if it was deliberate then you wouldn't it would speak to you if i say to you look at that dog i'm being very deliberate that there is a canine over there and i'm asking you to put your attention to that dog make that connection so that you can see that dog that's communication i have an idea i want you to engage with that idea that specific idea and so I compose my words in a way that then direct you to that. I design that experience for you through word. If you're not designing that experience through visual images, then you're not visually communicating. You're just making mark. You're just making, just like in, in verbal communication, you're just making noise. You're making sound. You know, I say, look at that dog. That's very different than going blah, 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 blah. You don't know what I'm saying. And so it's the same thing visually. No one knows what he's saying. And so therefore, when it comes down to soul, what is he communicating? I give pattern a four. I can see that there is a rhythm in his pouring. If you look at some of these marks and you look at the marks next to them, you can see that there is a spacing that's going on. And that's just that natural math that occurs when you get into like a zone or a flow. That rhythm creates certain patterns. Now, I give him a four, not a three, two, or one, because three, two, or ones are down in that no section. So I give him a four, low, kind of. Again, it's not intentional. It's not deliberate. He's not doing it on purpose. Harmony. 
I give him a 9 on harmony because as my eye goes around the edges, somehow, with all of this chaos, my eye doesn't get stuck anywhere. My eye doesn't feel like it's being thrown off the edge of the page. That's remarkable that in all of this randomness, you, there was some level of sensitivity to it that allows the eye to actually move around the edge and then come into it without being stuck or thrown off or really having any point in this image where it requires a lot of effort or extra effort to move past. And so I think that's actually quite quite impressive. And then lastly, his signature bottom left-hand corner. My eye flows around it pretty nice, so I give him a nine. He uses a dark signature. It doesn't compete with the image, even though it is kind of large, but it's done in a way that it doesn't compete. And, um, and I like how that bottom left-hand section is a little darker than the rest of the image, and he puts a dark signature down in there to lower that contrast. So he did a really, really great job when it came to signature, harmony, obviously his style, and the use of his medium. I think he did very poorly in having a subject, a story, managing the shapes. So that's where we're at. That's the Jackson Pollock. So ultimately, I give him 63 points out of 126, which happens to be a 50%. I always tell people, unless you make 85% on this score, I would never suggest anybody buying the image. Now, with that said, this painting has probably sold for millions of dollars, and that's a certain type of market that's going to buy that but if you're looking to buy artwork and buy quality work you want a work of art that actually is quality and will enhance the the environment in which it's in which will broadcast ideas and feelings and thoughts on a continuous basis that's uplifting raises your consciousness vibrates with you well those things have to be designed considered planned and composed this was not what is good about this jackson pollock is that it's even though it is chaotic. It's not loud, which is very nice. So on that note, until next time, ciao. Special thanks to our Companions of Art and Culture. Thank you for sponsoring this video and helping us nourish many more souls with art. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on our newest video. Try art scoring another painting by clicking the video on top. For details on becoming a sponsor, watch the bottom video. Always remember, you count to art. And on that, we all say, Boom Bella.